In today's episode, we're talking about self-limiting beliefs, why we're limiting ourselves, how to basically unlimit ourselves so that we can grow, so that we can do more important things that are more aligned with what we are getting into, what we wanna get into in life. This is gonna be a fun one today. I'm gonna get deep, we're gonna talk about it, so keep watching. I'm Ricky Jasper, and this is the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. After getting laid off two times in six months, I realized I had to be chasing a greater vision in my life. I had to be walking into my calling. I spent time building up a successful fitness apparel business, and then now stepping back in front of camera to talk, to speak more, to hopefully inspire you to chase a greater vision in your life. And my goal with this podcast is for us to do it together. So let's make it happen. What's up and welcome back to the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Jasper. Today's podcast, we're talking about why you're limiting yourself or why I'm limiting myself or why we limit ourselves because I think it's a very natural thing. Part of the reason I think is because we we can look at the top of the hill, we can look at areas that we want to improve in or who we want to be and we can say, man, that's a very tough thing. So we either do one or two things or I say we, I have either done one or two things. I've either one, become very lazy, which means that I just come lazy, I just don't wanna do anything, and I just kinda sit back and look at where I wanna be, but I give myself excuses. Or two, I overwork in a direction that's not where I actually wanna go to, and then I can sit back and make more excuses and say, well, the reason why I'm not doing this over here is because I'm so busy with this over here. Self-limiting beliefs are a natural thing, Uh, Limiting ourselves can be natural because I think that we have a governor that we put on our lives from time to time. We say we can't go past this speed. And if we go past this speed, it's kind of like, well, we're going to bring it, bring it way back down. What we want to do is we want to take that governor off. We want to just go to the best of our ability. I love that analogy because I segment my life. I segment my day out, right? And when I go to the gym, I'm like, I focus on it. I'm very present. And I'm like, I'm just going to go. And then after that, when I'm, you know, with the pups in the morning, I'm like, I'm fully focused on that. And my mindset is do the best that I can there. And every segment that I have throughout my day, I'm present. I do the best that I can. And what it does is instead of looking at the wholeness of it, instead of limiting myself and saying, I'm really busy. I have to give energy here, here, and here. I have to give energy to the podcast. I'm saying, no, I'm focused on this thing and I'm not going to limit myself. I, my governor says, okay, you can only give this much energy and effort because you're only going to have this much left for X, Y, Z. It says, no, I'm going to take that off the governor off and I'm going to continue to push past it for wherever I'm working in. So we're going to talk about it today and we're really going to talk about why you might be self-limiting. And and I think that's an important key because there's one thing to say, oh yeah, I, I have self-limiting behavior or I have self-limiting thoughts or I have self-limiting actions. The why is really important and it's really key because if you can identify the why, then you can identify how to combat that, how to change direction. So we're gonna get right into it in our tips and tricks segment. This segment is just very practical, real stuff that has helped me, that I hope helps you. I have limited myself in a lot of ways in life and and to be very, you know, transparent. I was not consistent with this podcast for the past however many years. And every time I was like, oh, I have this, it's uh, is more important. I have this is more important. The reality is it wasn't more important. What's most important in my life right now is from a, aside from like family faith and anything like that is pushing out content that I hope helps people or helping people. Right now, this is the best way that I know how. And what I was doing was I was being so busy doing other things or neglecting this so much that I was not doing this because I was like, well, I have all these other things over here that are more important. They weren't more important, right? I was scared to get in front of camera. I was scared to talk because I was scared about the different opinions I might have and potential backlash or it not people not seeing it as much or, or whatever. I was, I was having all those fears and I was like, well, it's easier to just not do it than to basically put my heart and soul into something and get basically nothing out of it. But when I look back over the course of my life, I was like, well, I've, I've really put my heart and soul into a lot of the things that I love and I've, I've actually yielded pretty well. So maybe if I just do this and I'm consistent with it, it'll work out. So I had to identify um, where I was limiting myself or why I was. And, and I identified three areas that I was limiting myself that you might be as well. If you do identify with these, then you know, be real with it. Be real and honest. If you don't, let me know why you were limiting yourself in the comments. So number one, you're overworking. You don't love what you're doing. It's not leading you in a direction and it's not a means to the to the end. So uh, I think what we do a lot is we, we do a lot of stuff. I talk about this in other podcasts. Like we just do stuff and we're just working hard and we're just expending energy and we're just doing it in a way that is more so um, 
distracting us from our cause, from our purpose, from our goals, from our talents, from our gifts, from our abilities, from our overall ethos of life. We're just distracting ourselves. Even if it's yielding monetary value or whatever, it's like you're climbing up you know, a hill that once you get to the top, you're like, I don't even care to be here. And you're able to see the other hill that you, if you had spent that time, you could be there and it'd be more fulfilling, right? How to solve this is make time for what matters. When we do this podcast, Mason and I, we have, we have scheduling conflicts all the time because we both work and we both do things and it was like, but we have to make time for it. So sometimes it's like, Mason's like, I'll be here at 645 in the morning, right? Because we have to get this done before my meetings start or we have it planned. And then the day of it's like, Hey, can we reschedule it? Because because X, Y, Z, but we have to make time for this. And we don't just cancel. We have to figure out a way to make time because this is important to us. And no matter how hard you're working in, in, in another aspect, that that thing that's knocking on your door, that's like, hey, you, you over here, you're limiting yourself. I don't know what that is for you. I, I really don't. Like The reason why I'm vague about you're limiting yourself is because I don't know what that is for you. For me, I can tell you straight up, I was limiting, limiting myself of not pushing content, of not getting in front of camera, of not investing in myself, of not cultivating messages that I felt could help and why I was doing that one because I was overworking I was doing different jobs I was you know running 413 apparel which at the time it was a certain place in time where I felt like that was my purpose but it got to a point where I'm like I'm just doing this because it's the thing to do but I really should be doing this over here but I'm just going to overwork in over here and when somebody asks hey you you'd be really great to you know really be consistent with this I'd be like ah but I don't have time you know, or I don't have the funds to to fund it. I would just make up excuses, but I was overworking myself. So make time for what matters. That is going to be, if, you, if you're overworking, then you might have to bring down your work efforts in some aspects so you can increase your work efforts in another aspect so that you can start practicing in your sphere of influence and, and where you want to be. And you're going to get better, you know, as you grow, because when it came to that too, I was thinking, I was like, well, how, you know, my previous podcast I used to film for myself were like six minutes long. Now we're doing 15, 20 minute podcasts. And the other limiting belief I had was why I kept overworking was like, how am I going to talk for 20 minutes? How, what, what, what do I have to, to say? Who's going to watch? So I just kept overworking. So I didn't focus on it. Whatever your self-limiting belief is, um, you really have to work with that, but you have to also identify where you want to be. Number two, you're settling or you're delaying the inevitable. This goes outside of just working on your craft and so on and so forth. This could be relationally. You might be in a relationship that just isn't serving you, but you don't think that you are worth, you know, more or that you could do better, or it's just so comfortable in the relationship. Although it might be fine, it might be a detriment to your full potential, um, to having someone who can push you or to you even being a better person, person in a relationship that serves better for you, right? It could be career wise where you're just kind of settling for a career because you're scared of what responsibility you'll need to take on to be at that next level because it's going to require more of you. I've been through that before. You know, I've been very comfortable just kind of like going along to get along, you know, because I was like, but if I'm get more responsibility, then I have more to lose. I am more on front street. And I really had to get over that. From a lifestyle standpoint, you might be just settling for doing the same things and having the same habits. I talk about this, you know, how I was from a lifestyle standpoint. I would wake up in the morning, hop on the phone, I'd scroll, I'd see who's in my DMs. I'd just be DMing girls and that's kind of how I live my life. I would just basically do that, right? I was limiting my potential because I was like, if the, my only focus is just to make money and to date a lot of women. Yeah, at a certain time, I was like, oh, that seems cool. As you grow, you're like, wait, I'm limiting myself. Like that can't be what life is all about. Acquiring stuff can't be what life is all about. That was me settling and really delaying, you know, some gratification that I could be doing the right thing. And then the other thing is your, your life choices, your actual choices that you make on a day-to-day -day basis. You might just be settling for less than if you're like, oh, I want to be healthier. You might be settling for, oh, but I always eat this crap or I always do this thing, right? You're settling. So if you are limiting yourself or you have self-limiting beliefs, sometimes your actions are limiting you and it might be in those areas. Those are the areas that I've identified for me. You might have different areas, but whatever those areas are, the solution to it is make a bold move. Make a bold move to not do those same things. Make a bold move to, if you're in a bad relationship or in a, in a relationship that isn't serving you, to change the relationship, to, to move from the relationship, to be a better person. Make a bold move to change a career or to move up in the career that you're at or to to ask for more or to, to give more or to take on more responsibility. When you make those bold moves, it drastically shifts 
what you do on a daily basis and it puts you in another level where it's like even if you have self-limiting beliefs you gain confidence because you're doing the right thing because self-limiting beliefs like i said will always be there but you will gain confidence just really doing the right thing number three you might be fearing failure uh i think that this is interesting because you really aren't seeing how powerful you are you know uh you as humans we have so much power and choice in our day to day. Maybe that's maybe I'm saying that from a privileged standpoint, but there we we have control over some things. And if and if you're in an area where you don't have a whole lot of control, then control the controllables or what you can. Right? Um, you have power and resources and areas that you don't need to fear failure. Except that failure is going to happen, and that fa failure is a teacher. For me, what I had to I'm I'm such a perfectionist. I don't like. I don't like being exposed for not knowing. I don't like being quote unquote exposed for feeling dumb or anything like that. But what I had to realize and what I've realized is that I don't know everything. Not everything's going to look perfect. Not everything's going to be perfect. It's part of the reason why I became more consistent with this podcast is because I was like, it's never going to be a right time where I feel 100% adequate to go out there and tell my opinions on whatever. There's always going to be someone who says, you're early 30s. You haven't gone through enough life. How are you talking about that? Like there's always going to be there. Someone says, I don't like the way that you deliver things. I don't like the way that you look. I don't like, it's always going to be that. But knowing that that's the case, it doesn't mean it's failure. But even if there's areas that I fail in and I accept that, it's like, okay, I accept that that's a part of the process and you just learn from it. And that kind of goes to, you know, sometimes we set unrealistic expectations of just being perfect. Sometimes our limits are because we've set such a high bar of perfection that we're like, I'll never reach that. And because I'll never reach that, I'll never try. Perfection should not be the key or should not be the objective. Progress should be the objective. I can wake up every day and look at myself in the mirror as a man and say, I am a better man today than I was yesterday because I, I tried, because I woke up and I gave my, my best effort. Did it look great? Maybe not. Did it turn out the best? Maybe not. Did I fall flat on, on my face? Yeah, maybe, probably in some areas. But am I up today to try to improve? Yes. And if that's the only thing that is a good thing about the day, then that means that I've faced failure head on and I've progressed and I've done something different. If you view failure as a teaching point, if you view failure as part of the process and if you expect to fail while giving your best, those self-limiting beliefs, they just kind of like lift off you because it's like, oh, I, I expect that this like is going to be what it is. Mason and I talked about this when we first had strategy meetings about content. We we're like, content is going to look, you know, different after month three, after month six, after year one. Because we're like, we're going to fail with some stuff. We're going to try some some things out. We're going to see what works, what doesn't work. If you notice, we don't do the head and heart hits anymore. Because I was like, I like that. But I was like, the flow of how I'm talking and where I want to get into and the energy that I want to bring kind of gets dampered by something else. And it's like, I want to uncover that block. And maybe we put something else there. But, but we expected these things to happen. How we're about to change content with certain things, it's like... Oh, doesn't mean that we failed. It's like, oh, things didn't maybe didn't hit how we wanted to or they did or we're like, but now it's kind of changed some things, flip the script. You're learning in the process. It doesn't mean it's a failure. And I think that that is so important because once you alleviate that stress off of yourself, you almost alleviate the self-limiting beliefs. You feel a lot better because you're like, oh, I'm allowed to fail. I'm allowed to grow. And this last thing, it's kind of like a pseudo point. Not everybody's looking at you. Not everybody's looking at me. People don't really care about whether you're failing or not because why? Because people are so insecure for their own self, their own failures and trying to be perfect themselves. They're too busy looking at you. I remember when I was in school and I was watching other people, you know, go up and present and I was sitting back and I wasn't even focused on them presenting because I was looking at my presentation being like, I don't want to, to flub a word. I don't want to mess up. I want to make sure my stuff is perfect. And then when I got in front of class and when I was presenting to everybody, I was looking and I was like, nobody was even looking at me because they were sweating bullets and they were nervous about them presenting. That I think is how life is in some way, shape or form and in some aspects because we think that everybody Everybody's looking at us and they're not. They're focused on themselves. And I think that that's a beautiful part of life because it gives you the airspace to fail. That gives you the airspace to alleviate your self-limiting beliefs so that you can just go and work freely and fail and work hard and do the things that you want to do and improve in the areas and the facets of life that you want to improve on. Allow failure to be, allow failure to happen, to, to bring it all together. Why you might be limiting yourself? One, you might be overworking in an area that's not serving you, in an area that you are just distracting yourself from to your calling or from 
where you should be improving. Number two, you're settling or you're delaying the inevitable. You're staying in a, a stagnant relationship. You're staying in a stagnant, you know, career that you don't really care for. Uh, you're making the same lifestyle choices that aren't serving you. Um, you're just overall just settling when you know, when you know a thousand percent you can do better. And number three, you're, fe you're fearing failure. The reason why you might be fearing failure is because you're trying to get everything so perfect. You're trying to make sure that this, I have to reach this perfect thing. And if I don't reach it, then ah, I don't know, man, most people aren't looking at you. Most people aren't looking at me. They're just trying to do the best they can with what they have, which gives you the airspace to do what you need to do. So that's to bring that thing all together. The word of the day, the word of the week, a word that I hope that helps you out this week is go. The reason why it's go is because that is an action of we are just going forward. We're just doing the things that we have been called to do or we are going in a direction that is even towards our self-limiting beliefs. Sometimes we have those beliefs in things and areas that we care about and so we have to go towards them. No matter how painful it is, no matter how it feels, we have to get to a, a place where the, the limiting beliefs, although that they might still be there, they slowly slowly seep away. They slowly creep away. How we do that is you go towards it. You go towards it each and every day. You try to be better each and every day. You don't fear it. You allow it to not feel the best. You allow all of the negative emotions to be there, but you do it anyway. I hope that this message helped. I think self-limiting beliefs and, and I think that we have so much power and capability in us um, to do so many great things and whatever is great to you is great to you. What's great to me is great to me, but you have so much power uh, within you to do it. I just want to see you step into your calling, step into what you are what you wanna do. The reason why this podcast is named Chasing Greater Vision because every day, I want to chase the greater vision that I have for my life, not for the end goal, but for the process and for the person that I'm going to become, for the people that I'm going to hopefully affect. And I want you to do to do the same. So we are going to go in that direction. If this episode helped and you liked it, like, comment, share, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. And that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you all so much for watching the Chasing a Greater Vision podcast. If you like this podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, send it to friends, use a carrier pigeon, do whatever you have to do. We hope that this inspires you to chase your greater vision in your life and for us to continually and consistently do it together.